the idea is that my sense is this is where, well, let's just say the obvious, Kostya and David, but especially Kostya, I think, are going to go out in a month or two and face this new world of over-the-board chess. And in this new world, maybe people are going to be much stronger. It's totally possible. <laughs> but what I am convinced of is that this is the kind of position that A, I think Kostya can get better at, and B, where a lot of people can be significantly outplayed. So what I'm going to do is, before we're going to start this training match, we're going to give them, I'm going to blabber on a little bit, and they can think about this position. Um, and I think I wrote black to move, and I'm not sure I meant that. <laughs> I'm not sure I meant that. Uh, it's actually white to move, so we'd better change that. Cry. Get it, get it correct, buddy. Get it correct. So it's white to black. White to move, sorry. And so um, one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to set a poll up. And I'm always bad at setting up this poll, but here we're going to go. Mm. So see how I always set up, I say back, back strike poll, and then it doesn't work. Open. You got to hit enter. Okay, let's try it again. No, it never works for me. It's like I hit enter, and then it, oh, you have to hit enter twice. Okay. Uh, what is the eval is the question. And then we're going to have one response. Is black is better? equal, then we're going to say a uh, little better, and, and David and Kosti are going to have to answer this in a little bit, but you guys can all vote while they're thinking on it. A little better for white, uh, clearly better for white, and then we're going to say black is toast. All right. Say duration, let's, let's put it up to five minutes so we can chat a little bit. Start poll. Okay, so that poll should be working. Nice. Do you see it? Do you see it working? I don't quite mm -hmm. see it working. Yeah, it looks good. It's okay. in the chat. Good. So, um, again, let me just reiterate while they're thinking about this position that um, this is from these positions are all positions that to me are very interesting from famous games and um generally pretty rich i have studied them myself in some detail but uh like this one i don't think i could do it exhaustively um i did not do it with the computer and i think one of the interesting things about not doing with the computer is i'm just seeing it from a human perspective of you know what kind of problems, if any, uh, can be posed to either side here from a practical perspective. Um, and then thinking about just what we think is going on in the position. All right, I got a dumb question. How do I see the poll myself? I don't know. Do I have a refresh? I don't know. Huh. Well, it should be in the chat. It's at the oh, top. Okay, of got it. Now, yeah, I just had to refresh the, uh, the bar getting some interesting uh, votes here. Okay, so the after this is done, we are going to um, um, have them play a match, and it'll be five minutes each with a 30-second increment, and that is designed to mimic the endgame situations that are now happening, whether you like it or not, where you just don't have that much time, but you do generally get a heavy increment of something like 30 seconds. And learning how to play on that is something that I know that I'm not good at myself, but it's something I need to learn. So I wanna give them that this opportunity to do that. Also, once the game starts, I'm gonna post a link to it in chat. It'll be on chess.com and you can play along with Guess the Move if you want to, you know, see how you compare to our two giants here. And, okay, maybe I'll just check in with them. Any questions from you guys? Any questions from you guys? Um, questions? Hmm. No questions. I'm definitely thinking about the position. Mm -hmm. And, um... Yeah, I really like this uh, 
training technique of playing out with the increment because that happens in every tournament now every time. and i basically never practice it and right. it's not easy to play an extended game for like half an hour <laughs> on the increment <laughs> right um okay um yeah almost ready to start and i think at some votes. Is Kosti loud or is Jesse quiet? Maybe I'll bring my business a little closer. I got uh, in other, in, in just news, I my famous El Gato uh, microphone was damaged and I sent it back to the people there and uh, they sent me a new one, dude. They sent me a new one, so that was kind of cool. Nice. David has left the building, so we're gonna wait just a touch until he comes back. Yeah, it sounds good. Okay, um, looks like the vote's almost over. Why don't we hand the floor first? Oh, and I, I'll tell you this, uh, before, before I let them, um, before we, just to give people a little bit more chance to vote themselves, what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to have Kostya take black. And two reasons, one, is last week he had the slightly better position. And also because I want him to play King's Indian Structures. And with that, Kostya, why don't um, we say, um, what, what are your sense, what is your sense of this position? Um, oh, the, for me, the evaluation is that uh, if I was to choose, I would definitely take white. I would say white is Maybe between slightly better to clearly better. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm happy to play black. Okay, David, what do you think? Oh, he's, you're, you're still muted, buddy. You're still muted. I would also put white's advantage around like 0.5 or something like that. Okay, good. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm about to start the match and I will tell chat what I personally think and I'm going to just get this thing rolling and I will share with chat in just a second when, um, what should I say, uh, the actual, uh, the, the, the game link and you can play along with it. So, all right, now get it right. Yeah, really interesting position, guys. Now, let me just say this. I'll tell you my... Um, impression of the position. My first just instinct is that white was clearly better because of the better bishop, because of the terrible knights. Um, but this is where I'm interested to see how Kosia plays the position. It's like he's much worse, but in like in a lot of King's Indian positions, uh, I think black has ideas. And I'm hoping David doesn't uh, lose on time. I'd have to reboot the game if he lost on time. <laughs> he has only one minute to play. I have a feeling it's going to abort soon if he doesn't move. Yeah, he boarded. All right, let's do that again. I'm just going to set it up again, buddy. I know. I know what happened. All right, here we go. D. Proust. Hello, Kostya. That's why I wanted them to look at it for a little bit. You know, because I knew that chess stuck. Sorry, right, Jesse, you'll have to restart it. I, I know. I'm on it. Okay. Yeah, you have one minute, buddy. You got one minute. All right, here we go. Ooh, wrong one. Wrong paste. I did the wrong paste. I did the wrong paste. Let's go this. Go back here. Oh, darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Oh, very frustrating. Okay, hold on. Let's try that again. Proust messed it all up. <laughs> I can get this thing. All right. 5.30. Unrated. All right, there we go. And Proust has one minute to make his move. Here is the game. There is our live game, and we'll just be following them live. 
Arguably, I should have a analysis board up as well, but we're just gonna kind of follow along with it. And then later, we'll rejoin them after they're done with the game and we'll talk about what happened. Yeah, people liking King E2. Yeah, King E2 is the move that was played in the game. And honestly, I, good, he plays it. I started it off in a position where I felt like the first move was kind of obvious. I didn't want it to like be some hectic decision from white. Black, however, right now has a huge choice of plans. Um, and so let me just say the three reasons why black is not necessarily toast, even though on a ver variety of positional levels he is toast. One, he has got ideas to play some kind of bishop exchange. That could happen bishop f6, g5, or maybe something like this, uh, h5, bishop h6. That's one reason he's not totally toast. If he achieved that, his position would be amazing, not amazing, but it much improved. Also, um, White is a long way from actually making a threat, so black has several moves to, to do stuff. And number three, black holds the tension with f5. And what I mean by that is there's no real case where uh, black, or yeah, where white is going to want to take this pawn. It's just always a mistake. So black is the one who gets to decide do I play fe, do I play f4? And white is the one who always has to worry about it. Okay. Now, knight d7, it can't be that bad of a move, but it's kind of questionable, like, what is Kostya's idea right now? And I think king h7 would actually transpose back into the game. King h7 with the idea of either bishop f6, g5, or h5, bishop h6. All right. And, um, yeah, cool. Knight, you know, the sad, the, the hard part about it for Kosti is maybe with knight d7, there's a lot of plans that he can no longer as easily do after knight d7. And maybe he told himself a story of like, oh, I, I have to do knight d7 anyway. Okay, so we've actually transposed back into the game. And um, this will be a test of Proust's positional play, honestly, because Petrosian playing white in this position played a very strong positional move. This is a great opportunity, actually, for people to uh, play guess the move here. What should white play? Very beautiful move. Very beautiful move from white here. So far, a lot of pawn moves. In general, you guys, with h4 and g4, the reason it's not the greatest idea, it's not ridiculous, but that is black's side of the board over there when you're doing h4 and g4. g4, I have some sympathy with g4, but, but think about it this way too. You, you really got to make progress on the queen side. So, yeah, if you play g4, it's like... What are you trying to achieve, really? I'm glad Proust is thinking about it. This is his, uh, this is his moment. I have a... F well, I was about to say... I, I, was, I was about to say I have a feeling he won't get it. But maybe he will. And if, if he doesn't, uh, which he doesn't, <laughs> then it'll be a teaching moment. I do still think this might be, um, might not be so ridiculous to play it this way. Maybe. 
maybe. I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of it, honestly. Um, of what, of, of this move. Because you don't ever really want to take on F5. And right now, FG, FG, Bishop F6, or just Bishop F6, are both interesting opportunities for black. F4 is even kind of an interesting opportunity for black because then the bishop has to go to D2 and maybe we can do some stuff. The other nice thing about bishop F6 is you can dream about playing uh, bishop D8 and then out to B6 as well, in addition to threatening uh, stuff like G5, bishop D5. What was the best move? The best move, anybody, you know what's, no one said it so far. Very good, Grand Pacer. Knight B1, exclam. Intending both Knight A3 or Knight D2, depending on what white do, black does, and then uh, threatening Knight C4, going after the weakness on D6. And, you know, it's not like g4 is a ridiculous move, but I think it does, you know, maybe show the difference in class between chumps like me and Bruce and, like, the Petrosians of the world. And this decision, too, by Kostya, not a, not a super easy one to make. Um, Bishop f6 feels right to me. But this is also plausible. Yeah, I like bishop f6 and if h4, maybe just knight g8. And then, yeah, you know, I any kind of motion there on the king side, I'm... Uh, I'm happy for as black. I want stuff to happen over there. It's kind of cool with this game too, is that um, in contrast to the last game where we immediately left the main... Uh, you know, the main ideas of the game, we kind of fell into line here. with it. And, and Kostya just came up with a move that wasn't on my radar, but I think is at least pretty interesting. So we're going to put the knight on f4. It's going to cost us two tempi. And if white has to take it, whether it's a knight or a bishop, then ef is going to be amazing. Um, so Proust needs to come up with a plan now right now, and I think a dream could be that you just let the knight come to f4. Okay, that move, knight a4 seems superficial because how are you gonna, what are you gonna do next? Are you gonna play like knight b6? In the meantime, this knight g6 f4 is coming. And one of the amazing things about this position is black has black has opportunities to you know win like all the time with the king's indian you <laughs> it's never over it's never over man even when even when your position is downright rotten you still have chances for counterplay in the king's indian mm, i'm not a huge fan of b5 not a huge fan no, I think that was incorrect because now you've let you've given White an extra idea of knight d3 and b4 now, which he didn't have before. So b5 was like scratching at an itch. It wasn't doing anything. It wasn't doing anything over there. Oh, they pre-moved. <laughs> they pre-moved. <laughs> okay, and not only that, but... 
this also allows uh, at least the idea, this allows many ideas for white that he didn't have before. Rook c6 and bishop c7. Rook c6 honestly just looks like uh, a very nice position for white. Bishop c7 might be fine too, but rook c6 is so pleasurable to play. Why not do it, right? Maybe, maybe, uh, no, I don't know what you do after rook c6, man. It's rough. It's really rough after rook c6, man. Um, <laughs> Pre-moving isn't wrong. It's just a skill that I haven't learned, so I'm envious whenever I see other people do it. If you've been watching me playing ridiculous blitz chess recently, uh, I've been try I, I haven't been able to do the pre move. It's just been too much for me. Yeah, so you can tell that uh, what was it? Proust pre moved bishop takes b six because it's only it only took him point one of a second to play that thing. <laughs> <laughs> they won't tell me the pre moves. It's true, man. They don't. They won't tell me how to do it. Rook c six is a very well. Okay, maybe, maybe he's worried about rook c six, knight c seven. But you know, excuse me, knight e seven. But knight e seven, that ain't a good move. You know, at the worst case scenario, you got rook c seven. Probably something better than that too. And bishop c7, of course, might also just be crushing. It feels a little looser to me. Okay, rook c6. I like rook c6 a lot. By the way, don't when we reconvene, let's not tell him what the right moves were. We'll ask him, we'll, we'll do it as like a training question. You know, we'll be like, dude, what do you think you should have played Kosia goes all in, and I don't know what he's intending after king d2. One of the reasons I love that bishop, I, I wanted to leave the bishop on b6 for a moment, is it's touching the knight on f2, and the knight on f2 controls a bunch of stuff. King e3, I guess, dude, you can do that. You're, you're, in, you're giving black another opportunity with knight g2. Okay, it, it probably doesn't hurt anything. I mean, if he goes knight g2 and you go king e2, you're still going to have to go, you know, you're going to have to go back. But maybe he's saying Russians always repeat. I don't know. Oh, DM Hokey, they are totally flexing on me, buddy. Totally flexing on me. By the way, DM Hokey, I got you in the chat here, buddy. I... I don't know what you're talking about with the desktop audio. I got it down a little bit lower. I can make it lower if you want. I don't know. You were talking about me muting somebody or something. I didn't know what you were talking about, who you wanted me to mute. But now that they're muted, it of course, it doesn't matter that big of a deal. Prussians always repeat. That's right. All right, here we go. I guess just to put my own spin on this position, it's so bad for black at this moment that I just didn't want to give black anything, like no knight g2s or any ideas at all. And let's just say the obvious, b5 was a terrible move from Kostya. Terrible move, Kostya. Boss, oh man, one of the worst. <laughs> one of the worst. Yeah, you gave him this square, you gave him this weakness. None of that was happening. You know, if you just put that pawn back on b7 and the rook on somewhere on the c file, no problemo. Okay, so Proust is doing a dance that I gotta say is complicated to me, and Kosti is immediately kind of taking advantage of it. Complicated in the sense that, you know, he didn't have to allow the knight. We could have had the position with knight f4 and the king on d2, right? And now, 
yeah, it's just black has more options. So simple threat, rook takes, and all of a sudden David is having to solve problems he didn't want to solve. And maybe I'm just being a weenie. Like, maybe it doesn't matter. <laughs> Again, maybe the position is so good for dude that it doesn't matter. I, I want to stress, I really do predict that Kostya will have games very similar to this where he's playing some strong person and he's going to have some King's Indian, and maybe it's a King's Indian that went wrong like this one did, you know? And, um, you know, you're still, you're not lost, and interestingly, like, there's always chances for nasty counterplay. Interesting. And now Bruce is wondering, why can't I play rook takes d6? I'm going to admit that I don't know the answer either. <laughs> why can't Bruce play rook takes d6? It looks like it's game ending. Bruce is running back. Knight b4 would be the maximalist way to knock him out. Um... Knight before might be okay. I don't I don't really want my knight to go on the long journey. I just want to take that critical pawn. But um it might be fine. Proust is a maximalist, by the way, though. He he will do crazy, you know. Though I gotta say, Rook C6 was that was the solid move I was hoping he'd play. Alright, I gotta fix my screen here. Push him, baby. All right. <laughs> That's right, Charlie. Man, it's been rough. It's been rough in Streamland for me. Very rough. Um, uh, Bruce is tanking here. He's got the time. I think he's just, I don't know what he's, he's worried about something after Rook takes D6. I don't Maybe you guys know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's like rook d6, knight d3. Okay, maybe that was Kosia's intention is. Um, rook d6, knight d3, king d3, rook f4. You know, doesn't seem like it's going to work at all. <laughs> at all, because the bishop on d6 controls f2. But, okay. You know. Not totally, you know, it's just, yeah, it's over. It's too much. It's just too much. Too much coconuts. But Proust is thinking about something weird. If he goes on that adventure with Knight B4, I still believe in his position, but it seems like that's, that's dangerous. Then you got to worry about Knight H3 and all kinds of wildness. Yeah, I got to do a match with Nick Sons now, dude. Then I'll take it. Then I'll make it easy to 2700. All right, Bishop C7. Like I said, Proust is a maximalist. Now, this might work out, but the danger, of course, is that he's abandoning uh, the beautiful control over Black's entry squares. And Proust is, of course, claiming he's just like, dude, it's over. I'm taking d6. It's going to come with tempo. Everything's coming with tempo. Okay, that's a fighting move. Bruce don't care. Bruce might have made it difficult on himself, dude. <laughs> Thank you. I think Bruce made it. Like I said, he went for the maximalist move. 
I'm sure he's still winning, but uh, yeah, he's still fine. What are we saying? Bishop d6, bro. Bishop d6. Yeah, Bishop d6, it's game over. Game. Game. If like rook f6 or rook d8, you know, you just got to play rook e1. And it's crispy critters. The critters have been crisped. Well, I guess Kosti was, the, it was more like, I don't know if I would call it sacking the exchange. It's more like desperation from Kostya. We'll get some good training moments in just a second after Kostya resigns. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it a little bit. Kostya will not resign. Okay, fight on, Kostya. Fight on, buddy. Well, maybe dude is not going to resign. Well, we got to give Kostya some credit, right? Like, he's, he's fighting. He's fighting. King d3, I guess, is the move we want. Coast is playing for tricks. He might find him, too. If you're going to be a King's Indian player, you better get ready. Get ready to play some tricks. Because you will need them. <laughs> you're going to need them, son. That's what your opening is about. Yeah, this opening is actually, let's, you know, I was, I think it is definitely lost for Black, but he is fighting the good fight here. Yeah. The idea is the bishop on g7 will eventually become angry because we will achieve e4. And so, yeah, white all of a sudden, you know, he's winning mostly because that d pawn, but it is, uh, it's not over, Grover. This is not over, Grover. Tricks are for kids. I, you know, I've heard that phrase, uh, tricks are for kids all my life, but I never associated with the King's India. Definitely appropriate. Whoa, Proust goes for the knockout punch. Oh, well, maybe, maybe he's saying it's all over, Grover. I'm not sure. I'm not sure this is correct, Amundo. There's some uh, big questions here for Kostya. Now, an issue is going to be that when black, white plays d6, black will have bishop f8, d7, bishop c5, and then white has to wonder if you play d8, is white, black going to hold with rook d4 check, check to the miserable king? Probably not holding, even in that position. And I don't even know if white has to allow that. So this is a, a clever way to try to end, end the drama now. And Kosti needs some kind of study-like solution to save himself. Maybe... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's what I expected. D6, and now I'm expecting bishop f8, d7, bishop c5, d8, rook d4 check. And it should be winning for white, but maybe it's not all the way gone. And also cry, hey, there's bishop f6 at some point, but I don't, I don't think that's going to work. I think we run that bishop off off the squares 
Yeah, I don't think you get to you get don't get to stay on those squares. Oh man. Here comes Bishop F8. Now, David might have something spicier than D7. But D7 would be um, the default solution, right? So go D7, Bishop C5, D8, Rook D4, Queen takes, and then either Pawn takes or Bishop takes. And then we're saying we're winning because the Rook is going to snatch one of those Queenside Pawns. Is it true? Well, the claim is that it's true. I think it's true. I think that's winning. Um, they, like we said, David's a maximalist. He could blow it, for example, with rook c8, bishop d6, bishop d6, rook d4. And then all of a sudden the tables are turned. Oh, and we got the top guesser, Seth. Seth is the top guesser and then half closed. B4, so a maximalist move, and maybe it's fine. <laughs> maybe it's fine. Maybe it wins easier. But one of the weird things is, oh, Rook G2, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, no, I'm into this. And then Rook, there's no Rook G1, unfortunately, for dude. Uh-huh. Okay, Costi, you're talking to me, buddy. You're talking. Mm, I'm going to say law still, but this one uh, is going to require some technique from David. Notice that with this 30-second thing, it takes a while to get used to because it feels like you're losing on time, and then you're like, no, I'm not losing on time, not even close. Yeah, this is lost. This is lost, but it's not it's not necessarily the easiest thing ever. Now a five might be the way to go for it for black, just to trade every try to trade off all those pawns. There he goes. I guess the move on that one, right? Let's say a bummer for black is that the pawn is on a dark square. Now, I'm assuming something like B A, Rook A five, and then I'd like to play King E four in that position. The pawn the B pawn isn't going anywhere. Good. Me and me and Bruce, we think the same, man. And now I think black wants to play like rook a2 to prevent king f5. If king f5 shows up on your door, you just don't want it. You don't want to see king f5. Yeah. I think rook a2 is like... I guess I'll call it an only move. Still some practical chances here. Oh, I'm guessing the move's good now. <laughs> no, I'm guessing them pretty good. <laughs> David has time, and he's, you know, so let's say rook b6 is the default move. He might find something fancier than that, though. There he goes. And one of the terrible things about this that could turn into a training thing for us here at the dojo is it if Proust is unable to finish this off the old-fashioned way by keeping the H-pawn on, we will inevitably get a bishop and rook versus rook endgame. So even if he fails to win this position the normal way, Gosi would still have to defend the rook and bishop versus rook. Okay. 
And the really interesting question is, what will black do after rook takes b5? I'm assuming king g6 and go to h5. But nah, honestly, I don't know. Like, actually, that's an important point. King g6, rook b6, king h5. We're, I'm assuming bishop g7. Okay, so Kosti is going to do a fortress. He's going for the fortress. And um, maybe rook b6 is the natural move. And then... He might he might get Zook swung, honestly. I don't think I don't think you want to move those pawns. Oh man. Oh man. Yeah, that was my sense, MG Weirdo. That was my sense. King G6, H5 loses to Rook uh, B6, Bishop G7, but it would have been a thought for Black, especially if you conclude that you're toast here. Because I think you are toast, but it's it's still a thought. Now my question is, is after rook b6, are you in Suksvang? Are you in Suksvang after that? For example, rook b6, rook f8, bishop f6, something like that. Or do you just play like rook f1 or f2? Yeah, it's a real challenge now. It's really interesting, right? It's a challenge to crack the f file and you know maybe the simplest way to do it is if you are convinced that rook f6 is winning and maybe you shouldn't be but if you're convinced that rook f6 is winning that's your move and i'm not i'm not actually convinced it's winning i i'm guessing it is but i'm not 100 percent That's a clever move. And I think David is saying to himself, buddy, I'm just going to go around. My king is going to walk around the bishop. And that if you ever move a pawn, that will not be in your favor if you move a pawn because you'll be weakening your business. I think rook f6 was winning. Right, so if you don't want to risk that ending with rook f6, you have to do something like king d5 and all the way around. Um, in terms of resigning, I think in this show, I would like them to resign maybe a little earlier than they normally would. But right now, there's definitely no resigning here. Uh, Prudes has to be able to punch this thing through here. Yeah, like I said, I like rook f6. Yeah, it's a rook, rook f6, and then the end game is real interesting. I, and the way I'm looking at it, I just see uh, black running out of moves, and then we will start winning his pawns. <laughs> you miss Ohio? Sounds like you moved to inner city Detroit. Um, where I am is not too dissimilar from inner city Detroit. I'm in Baltimore. A lot of similarities to inner city Detroit. So Prus is having uh, second thoughts about whether he wants to play rook f6. I'm assuming he can walk around, you know, king d5. And then, you know, you march it up here. If he checks, you can go here and then we'll build a wall here, scoop the king in and then and then do it like that, you know. But would it just be easier to play rook f6 immediately? <laughs> if he can, you'd like to. Yeah. He did it. Dang. Costa has a very unpleasant decision to make here. 
Honestly, if he doesn't take and he, he just allows king f5, I mean, yeah, you allow king f5, boss. Oof. That's a rough world if you allow king f5. Maybe it's your best... I don't know. It's, it's now practical defense now. Well, let's just say, said there are many sides to Baltimore. There are many sides to Baltimore. Baltimore has many different cities. Mm. I'll coast you, buddy. Um, well, Pooh Bear, my sense of it is that it is a loss and that Proust had the chance first and then waited on it, thought about it, and did it the next move because he realized that there was... Oh, pre-move! <laughs> pre-move! <laughs> but then he thought I had the chance to think about it some more and then decided he could do it. Yeah, but it'd be five. That was the move I thought. And now King F5 was the move that I reckoned with. Yeah, there we go. Now, does Kostya have some weird drawing chance? That's the big question. My sense was that he did not, but this is definitely something where Kostya might be able to, you know, if, if he has a draw, it's some like study-like thing, you know? Maybe immolating his king in some way so he gets a, a stalemate. So he's... Okay, so the first trick, if bishop uh, g3, there is a stalemate. If bishop f6, g3, and then it's going to be stalemate. Hilarious. Wow, okay. So, Mr. Proust. Uh, did it become complicated, Mr. Proust? My sense is no, that g4 is a positional concession of the highest order, of the highest order. Um, and king f6 should end the game. King f6. Yeah, it's pretty basic. Bishop f4? Uh, big questions there, boss. What about g3? What about g3? Oh no, Bruce, what have you done? Am I missing something? What am I missing? What happens on g3? <gasps> uh oh, spaghetti -o. Oh no. Oh no. Bruce is losing his mind. You can see it in the cam. Mm. The sad thing, it was just Kostya's only idea. It was the only thing Kostya was playing for, man. You had one job. <laughs> you had one job, buddy. <laughs> you had one job. They both had two draws now in these two training games. Well, H3, it's, the problem is G2, Bishop E3, and then I, Black goes and wins the pawn on H3, and then, you know, game over. King F6 would eventually have been checkmate, yeah. <laughs> He's playing with kid odds. They finally caught up with him. <laughs> oh, man. We're going to blame it on Proust's kid there in the background. Lupin. Wow. Tough. Tough business. Jesus. I just blundered that at the end. Yeah. All right, I will grab the PGN, and uh, then what I'll do, guys, is I will invite you all to an analysis board, um, and we'll take it from there. Oh, so, oh gee. Um, okay, so... Um, first question... Let's yeah. Let's just go through it. We'll get to all the sensitive points as we get to them. Um, 
what's um any change in evaluation from your initial assessment? I think both of you guys were like both mm -hmm. slightly to clearly better for white. Yeah. 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 I mean, I thought Kosi was in a lot of trouble this game, mm -hmm. but okay. um, but you know, there were like also other moves he could play, and I was never like super confident, so I wouldn't like. I wouldn't really budge White's evaluation up based on that game. Okay. Um, well, first, one of the things I was telling Chad that's cool is you at least transposed back into the game. So you can, there'll be a couple of moments where you can judge yourself against Petrosian. One particular example will be interesting, I think, for you. Um, I think, Costa, that the position. Let me put it this way, uh, it's very interesting. I think White, my first intuition as I was telling Chap was that I felt White is either clearly better or maybe even winning. Mm. And then I, I've revised it though because Black has three, there are three things in Black's favor. That you hold the tension, like in a lot of King's Indian positions, White can never take. And you have the idea to play either bishop f6, g5, or h5, g5. Hey, sorry, Jesse, yeah? do, you have a, do you have a board that you're Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you guys, come on. Sorry, that's my bad. <laughs> Let me invite you guys to the board. I always get so excited. I, I could, like, feel it. arrows going in the background. Yeah. And I was like, I want to see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I invited Mr. Proust, and let's invite... So this was the game Petrosian against against who? Uh, Ifkov, and I'll show the full game after we go through it. Um, so, so I was saying, right? Black has three things going for me. He's got the tension. He's got Bishop F six slash Bishop H six ideas. F six G five, and you know, with that tension, like at some point, maybe F four G five, um, and third. White doesn't have any easy way in unless somebody plays b5. And then there's a way in. <laughs> then there's an easy way in if somebody plays b5. Okay. Um, so I, my sense is the best practical move for black would have been to play h5 immediately. Mm -hmm. That's what I expected. It's controversial though because you have to think about knight h three then. Yeah. And then I did. And then I did I this. Fe fe knight g four. Um. Okay. Yeah, that's interesting too. There's a. It's very. It's a very rich position. I I spent some time looking at this move. Uh. -huh. And then going for it. Okay. Also a thought. I, I, I believe in White's position, but it's, you know, it's hard to say. Yeah. I believe in White there, but what I couldn't solve was F-E-F-E, -E, -E, Knight G4. Uh -huh. And then if I try and go Knight G5, you know, he's trading and playing Bishop H6. Uh, so my Knight doesn't get through. And I didn't find somewhere I wanted to move the Bishop. And then next move is Bishop H6 from Black here now. Hmm. How about bishop d2? Good move, yeah. Simple and strong. Okay. Bishop d2. Okay. So first of all, I'm not yet threatening knight g5 because of rook f2 here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So white's next move maybe some rook to f1. Right. Although h2 is kind of hanging. Although h2 will be hanging. Um. So, I know b5 is frequently terrible, but I'm thinking of either rook f7 or b5. Mm -hmm. If pawns aren't people, black's only real problem is the knight on e7, right, Jesse? Uh, <laughs> well, and space. And the, the weakness on d6 and the worst king. Oh, okay. Yeah. A few things. Okay. <laughs> okay, but 
let's just say I, I don't know if H5 is best. That was just my take. And yeah. maybe a little bit derived from the game where Black played King H7, mm-hmm. which Costa is going to do. And then after Rook AC1, dude played Knight D7, and that's going to transpose to the game. Also interesting, though, was H5 here, which I think dude didn't do because of Knight H3. Mm-hmm. But even here, it's very, uh, very tight with moves like F4 possible now. Now, Bishop H6 if Bishop H6 here for black, mm-hmm. is white going Knight G5 check? Probably, yeah. But because again, I thought about those kind of positions in uh-huh. the game, right? Where the dark square bishop gets traded for the knight. Uh-huh. And I wasn't, like, confident about them. Fair enough. No, I think that's totally fair. Honestly, even bishop g5 looks like no picnic either. Yep. No, it's it's unpleasant. It's unpleasant. But okay, so let's look at the game. So in the game, it, well, actually, I'll, st- I'll show you in the game. So it went here, and then dude played knight d7. So we actually transpose, mm-hmm. and here we did a great, uh, I was asking chat what they thought white should do. G4 is not what the ma- maestro played. I thought I'd give you guys a chance. What did the maestro what? play? He didn't play G4? I, I'm not thrilled with G4. Oh my goodness. No, he played so much the was white. Yeah. Um, much better move. After which I think black might be lost. Wow. I thought G4 was one like basic thing that I knew <laughs> that I had gotten right. Mm-hmm. Um, there was some idea about maybe opening up the F2 square for the bishop so I could keep the bishop on this diagonal. So maybe like just knight D3 or something. Uh-huh. But, Unclear where it's going though, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys yeah. notice how the moment we were out of time pressure... You guys notice how the moment we're out of time pressure, my kid like wandered off. <laughs> it's like, yeah, actually, I can play by myself for a minute, just not when you've got a minute on the clock. <laughs> no ideas, guys, for white. I think once you see it too, you're like, oh, that's the right move. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's, yeah, that's the right one. Huh. Fascinating. Um, I guess H4 would be another try. But Chad also wanted H4, yeah. Uh, but on H4, I was thinking I would go F4, Knight F6, maybe. I'd go after H5. Why would H4 stop you from playing H5, Bishop H6? I don't know, but I mean, yeah, for me, h5, I, I don't know. I didn't like giving up this g5 square, but I mean, I'm really not sure. One thing I told chat was like, in a lot of ways, maybe this is a clear distinction, this move between average people like us and the, and the greats. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's obvious because I've, I've seen it, but I know that you guys are sitting there being like, what? I don't get it. Yeah. I I mean, I have no idea. During the game, I thought about, you know, G4 and Rook C2. <laughs> okay. So pretty much was on my mind. I think a lot of, once you see the idea, a lot of the... Um, what happens in you guys' game will be... Because Kostya makes a terrible blunder later that will help understand how bad it was. So, <laughs> okay, chat's, chat's giving hints. I'm guessing it's bringing the knight to c4. Yeah, knight b1. Knight b1, right. Yeah. Okay, and, good hints, chat. <laughs> and one key thing about it is, what's amazing is, dude is going to play knight a3, and what that will do is, if you play b5 then the whole game is changed dramatically because I have c6 and knight b4. Then the knight has something to do. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Right? 
So I'll, <laughs> I'll show that game. Oh, no, we'll go back and show that game later. I didn't think G4 was like abysmal. Um, <laughs> Good. <laughs> I didn't think it was abysmal. I thought it was, and I thought this was a really interesting decision for Kostya too. I didn't, I didn't think that, I, I didn't, what you did, Kostya, wasn't even on my radar, but I, I get it. It was kind of cool looking. Yeah. In fact, yeah, I, I, honestly, I just didn't know. Um, let's, I'll tell you what, there's many things you could do here, but let's give your move a chance because I don't think, I think it's here. Okay, so first of all, I want to say knight a4 is not great because you're not doing anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I'm trading stuff off. Okay, so Kostya should have played what? He should have followed his intuition. Right, so yeah, my issue here was that um, white takes on c8 and goes rook c1. Yeah. And then, I don't know, maybe me and David both felt that if white gets the rooks off, then black is really suffering. Because I, I felt like I needed a rook to do counterplay against like e4, g4. You know? mm. That's what I was going to do. Well, we can take a look. So snip. Snip, here, snip, snip, and I think the the basic thing Ghost you can do is play. Uh, obviously, Knight of Four is going to come someday, but let's improve the bishop. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um. I guess. Uh, this knight. This knight's not doing anything. Yeah. Well, you can do like B3. Okay, yeah. Um, and now we could do bishop D8, C7, or just like king G7, bishop A3, bishop E7. Actually, let me, let me try one other thing. Let me try... Oh, no, it's not fast enough. Okay, I'll play um, knight to H1 here. Dang. <laughs> Dang. Now we got the moves. Uh, knight g3. Um, pawn to h3, I guess. Oh, it's a mess. King F three. We just gotta say you've lost control, right? Maybe. King F three. Knight F five. This knight, David. This knight, buddy. I know it's coming next. It's coming next. <laughs> it's coming next. It's coming next. All right. Um. Bishop e3. So I'm probably going to end up playing like b3 knight b2 knight c4 anyway from here and so i got like play. h5 g4 takes yeah. c4 there's all kinds of stuff here yeah okay so but let's go back and um now i'm not going to claim that like black's totally out of the woods after this i just feel like as the king's indian player you just like this is this is the garbage you live for right you, that's why you play g5, Kosi. You're going to do this to him. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I um, definitely underestimated the rook coming to c6. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a big mistake. So yeah, b5. And I spent all my time on g5. <laughs> and here I didn't, I didn't fully evaluate anything. I, thought, so I, I, I definitely thought I was in huge trouble here. I was pretty confident with rook c6. Yeah, rook c6 looks great. I thought, I'm sure you're winning after king e3, but king d2 just made a lot more sense to me. 
Yeah. Just so that I don't want to give him no nasty check. And then he's going to start doing weird King's Indian tricks like that too, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but you're yeah, still... Here, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, here I um didn't really have much time to calculate. <laughs> you could have, you could have, I guess, played King E2. I don't know. Yeah, the, I can always go back yeah. to... I mean, I can always sort of go back and forth with the knight. But, I mean, knight d3 is fine here. Yeah, it's fine. I think. Yeah, this was the move where, like, I went tactical and I didn't, I wasn't sure. <laughs> it was great, man. That was, was great. Good. I thought rook f4 was a good practical chance. Yeah. And I thought this, I, I'm sure you could have done other things, but I thought that was clean. Okay, yeah, because I looked at king c2, rook f2, king b1, knight d6, and then e4 and thought it was kind of messy. It may not matter. Here, I, I didn't totally understand b4. Yeah, I didn't understand b4. Okay, the calculation... Well, I played d6 first, right? Oh, d6, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, okay, here was the thinking, right? Like, there's this variation d7, yeah. bishop takes bishop, d8, rook d4, queen d4, bishop d4. And then at the end, white plays b4 and probably still wins this endgame, right? Easily, right? This is toast. Yeah. So uh, I wasn't sure, actually. Um, well, I thought I'm in trouble, but my plan is to go... G4, bishop, G1, I thought actually maybe, but, well, I don't know, I guess king can go to E2, and, yeah, but, this is, probably losing? Um, White has two ways to do it, right, he could go here, bishop right. takes, rook B6, or he can play B4. Right. Uh, I don't know which one's better. Okay, so anyway, like, I'd look up to this position up to b4 here mm -hmm. and my intention was to play b4 here and i figured it was winning but then my thought process in reverse jesse was that like in this position mm -hmm. i could just play a move and there was nothing really useful for costa to do and then i could play d7 next move okay fair enough so right the, where like where it freaked me out was just like are we are we sure that costa really doesn't have anything to do i wasn't 100 percent sure i mean i Go ahead. I mean, I, I think the only thing he had independent of like, like almost any move here is like a wasted move after which I played D7. The only independent option is to sack the bishop on D6. Um, I think. Well, I guess. I mean, let's say H5. Let's just play d7 for kicks. We can we can come back later. And, you know, maybe you have some fancy king move. I don't know. Bishop takes uh, d8. Yeah, rook c8 there seems pretty simple, actually. It might, it might be some simple way, right? And then, and then something like that. It's at least not super simple. It's the other one seems simpler than this one, right? Holy moly. Yeah, the previous line was better. Um, but I'm yeah, here asking. instead of yeah. instead of d7, I think, yeah, rook c8 there was winning. That just forces you to do the same thing. No, side. no, rook c8's a blunder, buddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, this was my trick in the game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you saw that trick in the game, too. <laughs> I keep forgetting, huh? So maybe white should just move the king. Or play rook takes a6. Yeah, but you know, you played D you played this whole line to, to kill. I know, but I'll play d7 at some point. I just want black to waste another move on their rook. <laughs> you know, maybe maybe you just do that, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine with that move. Yeah. That's probably the simplest. But, you know, you, you wanted to... You, correctly, I think you were like, I, it needs to be as concrete as possible. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say for the rest of it, before <laughs> we don't need to revisit the pain, but I thought your decision to play rook f6 was correct and beautiful. I thought that was the way to go. And Kosti had one trick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and, so was this was this still winning for white? Oh, I, I, I thought so. Let's say king f6. Oh, even here. So, right, I guess I'm... Well, I was just going to come up. 
And then bishop check. And if bishop check, I think... Is king g6? Oh, yeah. I, I looked at this position here during the game. Mm. Um, sorry. Hang on. I even looked at... I haven't looked at this position. Like, basically, even if you get this position here, white wins like that. <laughs> okay, props, dude. Props, I like that one a lot, yeah. This is this is what I was, like, going for, and uh -huh. I just nice. got distracted. Yeah, yeah. That's really nice. So, so I thought there was just no way to ever save it because of that. But then, <laughs> then I didn't give your king a flight square. I mean, I looked at this position here, um, and I was like, oh, you know, I can't keep him boxed in because it's stalemate. And then mm -hmm. I calculated the long line with the bishop on g3 at the end. And I was like, cool, I'll just like wait with my bishop and he'll go king h4 and we'll go there. And then, yeah. and then I just allowed this anyway. <laughs> okay, let me show you guys the game. That's cool. Oh, yeah, show us. Knight b1. So again, if anybody's interested, this is Petrosian Ivkov from 1982. And I'll uh, show the beginning, it's kind of cool, this weird stuff. And here's, actually, here's a question. Okay, Kosti, I'm just going to ask you a question, you just, you just answer intuitively, so immediately, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you play bishop d7 or do you play king f7? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I go bishop d7, probably. Do you play bishop d7? Okay. I would move my king. <laughs> yeah, I think the true king's in there. You didn't even have to ask like King f7, you don't get my bishop boss. <laughs> By the way, I think queen a4, we also got to say real class because the white's king is now going to be proven better and you are defanging any counterplay that black might have on the king's side. Yeah. I mean, you've already like taken out one fang with the light squared bishop. That's right, with yeah. the queen, that's the last fang. <laughs> Knight b1. Ivkov had a tough time, huh? You have to play Petrosian, Fisher, Spassky. <laughs> or a great time. I would have wanted to play them. See, check this out. You're just not in time by one tempo. Boom. Boom, no tempo for you. Oh. And now, buddy, you got to move the pawn. Thank you very much. No. Not the pawn. Another class move. Watch this idea. Now you kick me, but I come back. And your pawns are on the wrong color, buddy. Again. <laughs> well, that's Everyone, even the G pawn. <laughs> play H4. Play H4, black. <laughs> Where he goes, H and every. Oh. Can't upon no. the light score for one second. <laughs> no. Dude says no. No. What? Huh? Resigns. No. Well, actually, oh. he, resi he resigned before Knight H4 came. Yeah. Zoot swung with B3. Nice game. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll be back here next Friday. And um, I think you guys, yeah, like, there's several skills involved. There's, like, technical skills, like we had at the very end. There's skills of how to play with the 30 seconds on your clock. And then there's just, like, general evaluative skills, like what's going on in the position, why, who's better and why. Um, and... For me, one of the interesting things was, I'll just stress it again, is that in the beginning position, it looks completely lost for black because everything, you know, basically every positional thing that could possibly go wrong in the King's Indian has gone wrong for him. But even then, even then I feel like black has interesting uh, thoughts. Uh, I did this with several um, of my students. And actually, another thought is that even at some points, you've got to worry about little tricks like this, you know. There, it, yeah. there are little tricks that can happen. And surprisingly, I would say, is when my first instinct would be like, okay, in this position, the standard F4, G5, G4 thing isn't going to be that big of a deal. But when when we played it out some, it still is a mess. And 
there's also the idea of knight g6 to h4. So like the king's Indian engine, even without the light square bishop, it, you know, it, it at least provides a diversion uh, against white's long-term queenside onslaught. You know, one other idea I had, Jesse, like just as like a theme is in some of the lines where black plays like h5 and white goes knight h3, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking that there might be a moment like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, where yeah. you just sack a knight on e4, get a rook to the second rank. You know, you don't have to necessarily take d5 right away, but you've weakened it. Mm -hmm. And then it's just kind of like a mess where white's running out of pawns. <laughs> and in particular, you know, whenever white moves the knight away from the center, which he's going to have to do, that's when we're going to really look to do that kind of trick, right? Yeah. And can I ask you a question about the technical part? Yeah. Um, if white doesn't trade rooks... Do they have any kind of like winning plan? And if not, that would imply that if it were the wrong colored rook pawn, the position would be a draw with like one against two. <laughs> That's pretty abstract. Okay, so let's go back and frame it in the initial position. So we're saying something like, say it again, if, if we don't trade rooks, you're, you're, so you're thinking for white that he wants to trade rooks. I'm talking about like the very end, rook and bishop and... Oh. Uh -huh. And H pawn versus rook and G and H pawns. Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. Um, I didn't see a way to make progress with his rook on the F file other than by trading the rook, which you, you, you mentioned that you approved of rook F6, right? And, and I did it partly because I didn't see any other way to make progress if, you know, because I have to attack H6 at some point. Uh -huh. um, and I couldn't get my king to H6 with the black rook on the board as far as I saw. And if there's no move other than rook f6, that might imply that if I had the wrong colored rook pawn slash bishop, uh, you couldn't win with rook bishop and rook pawn against rook and g and h pawns. Yeah, let me load this here. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And it's, you're definitely correct. Uh, so if we go to this beginning position, and the yeah. question David is saying is, like, if we switched the side of the board, for example. Right. And this pawn were here, and the pawns, in fact, were a6, b5. Then, um, and I'm on the wrong analysis board. So I, I, let me see here. Oh, you guys are here. Great. And then, uh, let's just, at the very minimum, say white's job would be a lot harder. I still think he's probably winning. You can't trade rooks, though. But you can't, okay. Because here's the other thing, because what the other plan you could have done, right, was you could have gone king d5, king c6, bishop d6, slide the king in. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that, um, yeah, I don't know. Once your king gets in, it's hard to imagine that there's not going to be some kind of mating. Oh, so, maybe some kind of plan, like put the king on e8 and go for bishop f8. There's all kinds of nasty things, yeah. Okay, and so it, there are some there's some ideas with the rooks on the board too. Absolutely, right. No. But you, I loved your idea. That was like, it was like you figure out if it's winning and then you go for it. You know. Yeah, I basically thought you know if his king goes to g6, I can always since my bishop's covering f6, I can always two song him out and get my king to f5. Right. And once the king's on f5, I can always just put the bishop on g3 and two song him out again. I thought exactly. But, I suit song too much, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the ultimate suit song. The, the ultimate suit song. <laughs> <laughs> David Proust gave Kostya the ultimate suit song. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, Sensei. It was a good one. Yeah, we'll do it again next Friday. Yeah. Enjoying it. Yeah, All right, guys. Uh, have fun.